trying to say today with one, two, three, 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 three. Is that restraining? One, two, three, three, three. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you have to do serious records for the UK at the moment, so uh, they don't have the same details and all of them. You need to make up details or you can opt out um, who is as well for certain stuff. But just make them up. Um, right, so once, you're, once you've got your dom domain into place, you obviously need to host them somewhere. Um, the way you kind of set up your hosting is going to depend on whether you're looking to start small. So if you're building like 10 or 20 sites, it probably doesn't, you probably don't need to go down the SEO hosting route. So you can just take out shared hosting accounts with a load of different providers and that way all your sites are going to sit on different locations. As you start kind of scaling it up and looking more in the range of 50, 100 sort of sites, um, you probably want to look at some of these SEO hosting plans which you can get. Um, the way these work is you basically you rent the server in the way you normally would, so a private, uh, private server or a VPN. And whereas with a normal hosting account, you usually get like one or two IP addresses to use, um, they give you a whole block of C class IPs and you can just distribute them across uh, your um, different domains. So it looks like all of your servers are in different places. Um, I mean, what I'd say is don't get too kind of obsessive over this sort of stuff. Um, you know, it's fine to have more than one site on the same IP, and that that's, it just looks natural, basically. But um, basically, the bigger you make it, the more you want it to not distribute the network in different locations and networks at different IP addresses. And um, yeah, I mean, just one point at the bottom there is I don't think anybody kind of fully understands hosting and DNS. I don't think even hosting companies do. Um, but with all of this stuff, it's really kind of easy to outsource. So, um, you know, don't let the technical stuff put you off and stop you from doing this if you want to. You can always find people that are able to do all of these things. So, in, yeah, what we've got, we've got our domains, they're hosted uh, in various different places. Uh, now we need to get the blogs installed in all of them. Um, pretty much the like, de facto solution to this seems to be WordPress. I don't Purely produce Joomla or Drupal or anything else, but uh, I think everybody just uses WordPress at the moment. Um, there's quite a lot of tools around. WP Desktop is one which just speeds up the installation process, so you don't spend 20 minutes installing WordPress, it takes a couple of minutes. Um, so try and streamline that bit, and then what I definitely suggest is spending a little bit more time trying to make these network sites look a little bit more like authentic blogs. So the first thing you sort of notice when you go on a network site you probably come across and even if you haven't used these networks um, is that they look terrible if they've got some stupid domain name like Central Baptist Church Community Center .info, and it's linking to a load of sites about the payday bank. Um, but they, they look terrible, they use sort of free WordPress themes and um, just any other crap. So if you spend a bit of time making them look a little bit better, possibly using Pro themes, like you can get these template clubs, wood themes and proper theme and that kind of stuff, which lets you download a whole load of professional themes which just look a bit better than the free stuff. Uh, doing basic stuff like changing the default about us page that you get with WordPress, so it doesn't say this is an example of a WordPress page. Just if people come across these sites, you know, if they get manually reviewed or whatever, um, they're going to look about using kind of AdSense and Google Analytics on them. Again, so most of these, um, most public blog networks, well, none of them will put anything like that on their site um, for risk of kind of leaving a footprint. Um, what you kind of, but I, I suppose the thing is if, if you think about what a genuine blog looks like, and which actually has a, somebody writing it and all that stuff, they're probably going to have AdSense or they're going to have some ads on it. So, if you, again, if you're doing a small network, 10, 20 sites, you can probably get away with putting your own AdSense page on there. Uh, if you want to show ads and you don't want to leave that kind of trash, you can always just put the AdSense code on there and just use somebody else's number. So go on the Daily Mail or whatever and copy the AdSense code and just put that on your site so it shows the ads. Don't do the Daily Mail, you don't want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
think the last thing I've got in there about um, 